Hello everyone. Today we discuss about centralizations and decentralizations. So centralization means concentration of authority at the top level of the administrative system. Decentralization on the other hand means dispersal of authority among the lower levels of the administrative system. Thus, the issue of centralization versus decentralization revolves around the location of the decision-making power in the administrative system. In a centralized system of administration, the lower levels called field offices cannot act on their own initiative. They have to refer most of their problems to the higher level called headquarters for decision making. They act as only implementing agencies. In a centralized system of administration, on the other hand, the field offices can act on their own initiative in specified matters. They are given authority to take decisions without reference to the headquarters. Thus, the essence of decentralization is the vesting of decision-making power in the field offices. Centralization is the opposite of decentralization. It means centralization of authority once decentralized. The word Decentralization is derived from Latin. Now definition. The process of transfer of administrative authority from a lower to higher level of government is called centralization, the converse decentralization. Everything that goes to increase the importance of the subordinate's role is Decentralization, everything which goes to decrease, it is centralization. Now, typologies of decentralization. Broadly, decentralization is one of the two types, political and administrative. The decentralization is further subdivided into territorial, that is vertical, Decentralizations and functional, that is horizontal decentralizations. A brief discussion of the typologies of decentralizations that I discuss right now. Political decentralizations. It stands for the establishment of new levels of government like the autonomous states in India or province in Canada. In the federal system, political authority is divided between central government and the regional governments, that is state governments in India or provin provincial governments in Canada. The creation of autonomous local governments in federal states like USA or India and in uh, unitary states like Britain or Japan also implies political decentralization. Thus the establishment of city governments in USA, Britain or Japan also implies political decentralization. And establishment of cities government in USA, Panchayat Raj or municipal corporation in India county governments in Britain and uh, prefectural or uh, uh, prefectural, pre -pre prefectural governments in Japan are good examples of political decentralization. Territorial decentralization, it stands for the establishments of area, administrative units, field offices by the higher authority that is headquarter. For example, the creations of divisions, districts and talukas, circles and so on in India. 
these are vested with decision making powers within specified limits and thus function in an independent manner now functional decentralization it implies the vesting of decision making authority in the special, specialized uh, specialized units by the central agency for example the creation of technical or professional bodies in india like the university grants commission flood control board central social welfare board or and so forth now approaches to decentralization classified the different approaches to the concept of decentralization in the following four categories that i describe right now doctrinal approach it conceives decentralization as an end in itself and not as means to the uh, realizations of some goal it views decentralization in terms of idealizations that is a theory which holds that things exist only as ideas in the mind political approach it says that the creation of decentralized unit with a set of operational autonomy is governed by political factor for example the creation of panchayati raj as a rural local self governing body in our country is politically determined administrative approach it says that the establishment of autonomous decentralized units in the fields is determined by the factor of administrative efficiency that is better decision making and faster problem solving for example the creation of regions divisions districts subdivisions uh, talukas and circles between the state headquarters and the field dual role approach it conceives decentralization as a method of resolving conflicts in field administration between tradition and change the uses of status quo oriented colonial field administration to bring about speedy socio economic change is leading to area function and dictatorship in district administration in our country merits of centralization it provides for maximum control over the entire organization it ensures that all the work is performed in the same manner and in accordance with the same general policies and principles it makes administrative abuses more difficult in matters like employment and handling of personal purchases and use of supplies and so on it ensures economy in administration by avoiding duplications of work it facilitates the introduction of dynamism in the organization through the active role of personal leadership it is suitable for dealing with emergencies and on anticipated matters it enables the maximum utilizations of the human and material resources in the organization and thus develops a corporate personality demerits of centralization it leads to delay in securing action as the field official have to refer the matter to the higher authorities it makes the head office over burdened due to a 
due to a apoplexy at the top and the anemia at the extremities it leads to autocratic control over subordinates and thus results in lack of flexibility in administration it makes administration irresponsive as the head office acts without the knowledge of social or local conditions and requirements it does not facilitate people's participation in administrative process it does not allow the development of second line of executives it is not conducive for the expansion and diversification of the organization now merits of decentralization it increases administrative efficiency by reducing delays and curbing red capitalism and encouraging faster action it reduces the workload of the head office and thus enables the top echelons to concentrate on vital issues like policy formulation examining major problems and so forth it develops resource fullness and self respect among the subordinates by making them to take decisions with a sense of responsibility it makes administration more responsive as the field units act with the knowledge of local conditions and requirements it facilitates people's participation in administrative process and thus strengthens democracy at the grassroots level it allows the development of second line of executives due to adequate delegations of authority to the lower levels it encourages the expansion and diversifications of the organization for effective goal achievement it facilitates the adoptions of national policies and programs to the varying conditions of different regions it alleviates the problem of communications overload in the organization by reducing paperwork at both higher and lower levels it encourages competitions and comparative standards of evaluations among several competing field units it makes possible the experimentations in decision making and implementations by several units without committing the whole enterprise to a untried course of action decentralization has a more important justification than mere administrative efficiency it bears upon the development of a sense of personal adequacy in the individual citizen it has spiritual connotation now demerits of centralization is complicates coordinations and integrations of the activities of various units due to decrease in the degree of central control over the total organization it makes communications among the various levels difficult and thereby reduce its effectiveness and author authenticity it makes administration expensive due to duplications of work and lack of centralized housekeeping it is not suitable for dealing with emergencies and unanticipated matters it encourages a uh, divisive force or forces in the organization and thus threatens the organizational integration it weakens the national perspective in administrations by breeding localism and parochialism it increases administrative abuses like corruption mal administrations nepotism and so on these things 
can be seen in the working of Panchayati Raj in our country. Effective decentralization suggested the following safeguards to make the decentralization effective that I mentioned right now. Field offices should report to one central agency only. Jurisdictional lines should be meticulous or meticulously drawn. Procedures in the several field offices should be of a common standard, although they need not be uniform. Field office should have a sufficient flexibility, physical and psychological structure to permit it to adjust to the emergent local conditions. Field office should not make decisions affecting overall policy, although it should be encouraged to make its own decisions to a point approaching that situations. A system of ready appeals should be present. Suggestions from the field to the central should be freely channeled. Adequate reporting and inspections methods should provide the center head with full and current knowledge of field operations. Centralizations and decentralizations. One of the issues that a business needs to address is where decision making power in the organizational structure. The key question is whether it is kept with senior management at the headquarters or the top of the organizational that is centralized or whether it is delegated further down the hierarchy away from the center and possible in different locations that, that is decentralized. Most large businesses do use some decentralization, especially if they operate from several locations or have added new products or markets. The issue is really how much independence business units or groups within a business should have when it comes to key decisions, especially those that might affect the business as a whole. Centralized structure. Businesses that have a centralized structure keep decision making firmly at the top of the hierarchy amongst the most senior management. Fast food businesses uses a predominantly centralized structure to ensure that control is maintained over their many thousands of outlets. The need to ensure consistency of customer experience and quality at every location are the main reasons why centralization is chosen. Advantages and disadvantages of centralizations are easier to implement common policies and practices for the business as whole and disadvantages there are often more layers in the organizations which will increase cost prevents other parts of the business from becoming too independent local or junior managers are likely to be much closer to customer needs therefore the best decisions for the local area may be or may not be taken by the business easier to coordinate and control from the center for example with budgets which prevents overspending and lack of authority down the hierarchy may reduce managers motivation economics of scale and other savings are easier to achieve for example all purchasing may be done centrally which will mean cheaper unit cost due to bulk purchasing. Customer service does not benefit from flexibility and speeds, speeds in local decision making. Greater use of specialist staff, for example, in areas such as human resources, finance and marketing. And decentralized structure, in decentralized structure, Decision making is spread out in including more junior managers. 
in the hierarchy as well as individual business units such as specific stores or trading locations. Good examples of businesses which use a decentralized structure include the major supermarket chain. Each supermarket has a store manager who can make specific decisions about their particular store such as staffing levels. However, bigger decisions regarding store layout are made by head office. In this instance, every store manager is responsible for a regional or area manager hotel chain are also particularly keen on using decentralized structures so that local hotel managers are empowered to make on the spot decisions to handle customers' problems or complaints. The main advantage and disadvantage of using decentralizations, decisions are made closer to the customer and therefore are more likely to reflect their specific needs. Decision making is not necessarily looking to the long term further directions and business better able to respond to local circumstances, more difficult to ensure consistent practices and policies, customers might prefer consistency from locations to location. Improved central, improved level of customer service and maybe some dis economics of scale and inefficiencies across the business. For example, staff may duplicate roles across different sites so that's the end of the video my friends if you like my blogs please subscribe my channel thanks a lot for watching my videos